So this is the roller fairly set up. This is now suitable for a steel cable. If we have to do some serious winching, we would put on this fairly. But now, it wouldn't be LR time if this would be all. Now check out how long I take now to change this over. My LR time license plate holder. So the license plate holder goes on here, like this. Okay. And the license plate holder accepts now a flat fairly, which is fine for, you know, the small household winches. If you got to tow the mall crawler off a curb stone at the mall, things like this. This is perfectly fine. If I take the hook off and I slide this in, I can close this up with a magnet. Okay, so pretty simple design. God, how are we gonna get that back in again? These four bolts are now almost Toyota quality because I can lean back, use one hand, and tighten them. Hi, I'm Christian. And I'm Vera. And in this week's episode, we're gonna finalize our winch installation with a couple of clever features. Hope you enjoy the video. In one of the previous episodes, we installed our winch mount bracket. And after that was done, we received a whole bunch of comments from subscribers recommending a few changes. In this episode, we're gonna address all those changes. And in addition, we're gonna show you a few clever extras we installed. It's like NASA engineering now. It smells like a fresh paint job in here. Yes. Oh, look at that. Oh, my recovery hook. It's a beefy one. It's at least 10 millimeters, if not more. So now Christian fabricated that, that, and most likely those parts. We're gonna do those modifications which were suggested by you guys after making our last winch video. The prints we already released and sent out include already those upgrades, but we have not installed them in the vehicle yet. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, it's not Fabian, it's and, not the, Fabian. and the engine is not broken, so okay, that's all. Okay, that's good. <laughs> um, now the first thing, what we had a lot of criticism, I have to say, was the way we mounted the fair lead. The fair lead is a device which guides the rope in. Everybody knows that, but I didn't know that. I learned this from you guys last time. So the fair lead mount, the way it was mounted last time, was that if there would be any side load on the vehicle, so if the rope would come out around the corner, it would pull the entire bumper over, distort it, and probably break it because it was only mounted over some, over some M12 threaded rods. So what I did is I designed in a fair lead mount box which attaches to the front of the bumper bracket that's this device and i already had all those pieces in the print last time but i didn't have them lasered out so now i built this fair lead mount according to those drawings this cover is basically going directly underneath the bumper so the bumper skin which is a four millimeter layer of plastic is going to be right on top here and this is going to be all compressed down with my threaded rods so you're going to be able to take side loads using this beefy fair lead mount that is a major improvement if you get the prints from us and you get the laser cut files from us these pieces will be included basically a standard fair lead mount has here m8 or whatever holes i didn't like that at all I made mine so I can get a full M12 nut in here and still have it completely countersunk. And most important thing, I can still get the socket around. And an M12 nut uses what socket? 13, 15, 17. <laughs> okay, how many are left? 22. Now, what is between 17 and 22? 21. No. 
19. Yes. <laughs> I never use a 19. And the 19 millimeter socket still fits into my countersunk hole. Now, why is that important to me? It's important to me because this is the device we will have on when we drive the vehicle on the road. This is the only legal fair lead mount in Germany because it does not have any sharp corners and it does not stick out. When we are going off-roading and if we need to winch, which might be once or twice. In 10 years, hopefully. In 10 years. Yeah, not yeah. only in 10 years. <laughs> we're going to be able to take this fair lead mount off and mount the proper fair lead, which is much more suitable for a steel rope. Because, as I learned last time, these are not very durable if you use them with a steel rope. First of all, the steel rope could kink on these corners and get damaged, and the fair lead mount itself will get damaged. But I want to say if you winch once or twice in 10 years, this is not so important, okay? So we're going to be able in, the, in minutes to put on this fair lead mount when we are up in the Alps, in the Pyrenees, or somewhere in our local forest getting wood. The other biggest complaint was that we lost last time after bolting on the winch bracket our front toe point. Even though I explained three times in the video that there is a piece missing. This piece will be added in now. This is also already in your laser cut files if you receive the drawings from us. And I upgraded the through hole here which mounts this recovery point to the bottom of our winch mount bracket and it's basically as strong as the original one, 12 millimeter steel. It's called an, uh, a recovery eye. A recovery eye, okay. <laughs> there is no M20 no. bolt on no. a Land Rover Discovery 3 until you mount the LR Tide winch mount bracket, okay? By the way, this one is way too long and I don't have a short one. So where do we get a bolt on Sunday? You cut it. No. And then you if put I cut it, it, there's no thread left. And you you put a thread, thread in. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Another thing which was kind of annoying last time was the way you had to get your nuts behind the bumper in order to get the bolts in. So this is this area here. Yeah. This area here. I made these straps here with an M10 nut welded to it. So I can scoop them up in the back and basically have the nuts retained and it should be easy now to get the bolts in and out without having to fumble washers and nuts behind it. So we got four of these. Again, these pieces are also in the laser cut files, um, which Vera sent you if you requested them. They are and, free of charge. So. And thanks so much to those who actually donated uh, money for those winch files. That was yes, really kind of you. That was very generous. All we want is that you guys are happy and you can duplicate this winch mount bracket easily. And the last thing we're going to do, build an actuating lever for our clutch, which can be used without taking the grill off the Discovery. And also we got the remote control to work this time so we can demonstrate how this works. Oh, yeah. I had to call tech support from the people who sold me the winch and they told me how to use that because <laughs> I, I maybe should have read the instruction but there is an on off button on it and you got to hold that on off button pushed until this light comes on and now you can actually use the remote so it worked on the push of a button literally so we can Men don't read this. instruction and, and don't ask for directions. Yeah, and another thing we we still have to do is we want to make the license plate hinge so it folds down. Because if it folds down, you can still see the rope when you look down at the winch. The last thing I want to comment on is that we should use a synthetic rope. And yes, a synthetic rope has its advantages. The steel rope actually has some major advantages according to the YouTube videos I found. And that is, it is nearly maintenance free and it's completely insensitive to dust. And if you think about it, we're not going to use our winch a ton of times because we don't live in Moab. We live in downtown Germany. I mean, we're not going to need a rope. What are we going to do? Tow ourselves on the tow truck with a steel rope. It is much more compliant with the usage we want to do with our winch. It's going to be in the front, 
in the rain whole year long and it's not going to get unwound um, once a year, maybe, and then even just for maintenance. Yeah. So the wire rope is for us the better choice. And a synthetic rope is high maintenance, more expensive, and yes, it is less dangerous. But as we've seen on Fabian's winch, if you don't know what you're doing with that winch, with a synthetic rope, and you use it wrongly, it can get damaged. Well, it gets what's called rope burn. Yeah. Again, I all know that stuff only because I watched Ronnie Dahl videos. So the rope burn um, is if the rope is not wound up correctly on the winch and you don't unwind it far enough so that the rope is, you know, only on a bottom layer of the winch and then you pull heavy loads, the rope cuts in between the other layers of rope and it gets rope burn. And that was the case on Fabian's winch, I assume from his previous owner, because he never used this winch. I mean... Yeah, only to get onto the dummy <laughs> truck. Now we're going to take the bumper off. We put these pieces in and we see how this goes. Yes. And close the parking brake and open the hood. Don't you just love it? And what is of course the first thing we will do now? Disable the suspension. Oh, what? They are getting weak here. We have to get new ones. Here. Oh no! So we'll take the fuse out to disable the air suspension. Third one from the bottom. Ah, this we gotta still fix also. Ah. So... You guys know how to take out a headlight. So using a little plier just makes this job much easier. Oh, and one broke again. Oh. See, it's because if the weather is so cold and they're 16 years old. They come was... into my broken off and removed parts. Here. Torx 30. The inside or the outside? Here are my new clips. That doesn't go here. It goes into here. Yep. Very nice. I want to take the time to thank our Patreons. We are now almost 30 days a member of Patreon and a lot of people signed up and support us. If we don't want to make how to drink your coffee video like most other people do on YouTube, we got to do projects and projects cost money. And for us, basically four projects per month. Thank you all, you patrons. Yes. We really appreciate it. And even those who give us a PayPal donation just because they like us and our content. That is so great. Maybe I should get our Toyota list and you do another installment on why we don't drive in a Toyota. Uncensored. Where? So he forgot that clip. This, we don't need to take the skin out. Oh, we don't? No. Oh. We didn't pay attention. I didn't pay attention. Many clips you have to remove if you get the wheel arches off. So we need the heat gun. That's always a pain. You want me to hold it? No. You just cause confusion. Oh. I pinch this hose. Put it over here. One, two, three, four. Yeah. And all I gotta do now, if my planning works, is I put this piece in here. Oh uh, no, it don't fit. There is something in the way. Oh no. The chocolate. I had to turn her the heater on. So this is what I had to do. Wait. Um, of course, I'm gonna change the file, but if you already have them cut, you're gonna have to do this with the angle grinder. These four bolts are now almost Toyota quality because I can lean back, use one hand, and tighten them. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Ah, what did you mess up now? 
I guess this one is not Toyota core. <laughs> Three eighths to half inch. Yes, I know. It took me almost 25 years to learn that. This thing is so cheap. Click, click. Side is like. And don't forget the chocolate. See, now the bolts are in from the front. His hand is stuck. That was difficult to get in. The last one. We are in the land of chocolate. There you see the bracket right here? Yeah. See the lower bolt, how it's nicely going in? Yep. Can you get now the next piece? Oh yes. Here for one hand. Don't scratch my car. This is how this was mounted. So even with this gap in between, having this all tightened, it was quite rigid. It was not that this was a completely weak design. The new design is just much stronger. Yep. We will have to put the rope right through it. This is now really easy to mount. You're not supposed to get annoyed. No? No? Okay, film my Crawford engineering fix setup. Oh. Hey, it was wow. my idea. You can okay. take credit for that now. Another engineering screw up I had. Now, if this piece, which is the spacer towards the bumper, goes on here, like this, it's important that it has here an end stop, right here and right here, so it doesn't slip back and forth and bend those screws with it. I give it a little bit of room. There we go. And we weld it on just like this. Nice beefy weld. Ah, oh, yes. You can see how that bumper is on the inside constructed. It has this reinforcement skin in here. And we want to take this reinforcement out in the area where our fair lead mount is. So we got to go to this rib here. I really hope this works. Yeah. And then here we got to go about halfway. this but I had to cut also this front gusset I had to cut this one also out so okay. this is not expensive and it is excellent to cut stuff out of your discovery 3 which you don't need anymore in <laughs> plastic excellent tool um, this one was about 79 euros and it comes with this plate with a round one and with some grinding attachments and I show you guys how this looks now this piece sits now in here like this and it is basically tying the bumper skin to the lead to the fair lead mount in a solid way cool the only thing we have to hope now is that i didn't screw up this dimension and um, the likeliness that i screwed up a dimension is it's like 99 percent you don't need to film this yeah i drilled new holes and relocated these cable clips because I cut the original clip mount away. Okay. So now I'm using tie wraps and I salvage the old clips. Yeah. You want to put an M20 in here. So that's M16. M16 has a 24 yeah. socket. I can take that now out. Yeah. And here we're gonna open this up to 20 millimeter and we're gonna weld two gussets on here. What? So will it fit? 
Yes. Your so, 20 millimeter bone bolt. But, but this this is already in the design, okay? So this is not really a modification anyone needs to do. Yeah. Now I need to make that nut captive. I gotta take the paint off. Yes. Oh. Here's how we get these welded in place. We drop the bolt in here. We have to make sure the bolt has the same size head as our nut later on. But we use the bolt because this way we are here in the right position. So later on the nut will sit in here. Mm. And now I can take this on. Did you clean your goggles? Your welding? Yeah, I got a new look. Oh, you got a new glass. Cool. Yeah. got ourselves fixtured. Let me first see if the nut really fits. Yep. Look, this bolt is a 4.8. Oh, not a 12.8, no, 8.8 what we use. We can't use that bolt, we have to get a better bolt. Yeah. See the nut fits oh, in between? Oh, 4.8 is even worse than 8.8. .8. See it fits in between? Yeah, cool. Now we're going to use a residual heat again. <laughs> this yeah. nut, all we got to do is drop it in later on and then you can use your power ratchet and it won't spin and it won't drive your nuts like it drove me nuts last time. The residual heat, so you learn something, huh? <laughs> Yes. And now I can put this piece oh, shit. back in here, maybe without the nut first. Yeah, like this. Now I gotta drop the nut in here. <laughs> yeah. Secure this. Because we have also welded all those nuts. And here I got now a spacer, which is also part of the construction kit, but I made mine out of aluminum. Because it's all yeah, that it lines up nicely. Yeah. And now all we would need is the recovery point yeah. and an M20 bolt, which we don't have. Yeah, we'll put it back on, we put a tie wrap around it. Oh uh, my god. And so everybody noticed, I did pre-bend this yeah. to match this shape, okay? Because this actually has the roundness of the bumper designed into it. Yeah. This one is broken. Yeah, but I don't oh, think... Oh, you got me a new one, how nice yeah, is that? Yeah, but it doesn't move when you... I think it's broken. It moves, it look. Moves? Yeah, it's a high quality clip even. Oh, okay. Now what we have to do is replace some of these plastic clips. Yeah. What we lost last time and I bought some. You have them? Yep. And actually one just fell out of my car. Oh, that was cool. Yep. When you put the bumper on, you kind of push them off. And this is why they get lost. Yep. Yeah. Get my water back on here. Yeah. Tighten up this clip. There Hold you go. Closing unnecessary content. Do you need help? Not yet. Hold on. There you go. That's good enough. Yeah, I'm useful also. I'm on side control. No, no, the clip fell off. Ah, Because I push them on. Yeah. The design is kind of stupid. Yeah. Okay, see how I have to get over them carefully. Oh, looking nice. So the bolts line up okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And new clips means we can mount our bumper properly. Good. So in Germany, we're not going to have our rope coming out here in the front, going down to the toe point, because it is an obstacle sticking out, and this would make it illegal. So we actually going to hide our rope in here, and we just let that piece hang out. Perfect. Yeah. 
M16. This is the M20, okay? I do have to say I exaggerated a little bit. The tightening torque of an 8.8 .8 bolt in M20 is 420 newton meter. My torque wrench goes only to 400. And also, this is a 10.9. So that So is I would have good. to scroll over once. And if a 10.9 goes to 590 newton meters. So <laughs> I See, this goes in here. And this goes over it. And the nut's already in there. As easy as that. It's still moving. You make it until you can't move it anymore. <laughs> now that feels soft now with only 86. Wow. It even looks better than the original one. Yeah, of course. Doesn't and it? I don't really want to put the plastic cover on yeah. it. That's what he's looking for. Oh, with nice Chinese writing on it. That's where you get that stuff. So, now we make a big hole out of a small hole. You know how to do that? Yes. You never seen that one? Oh, a punch. I've yeah. seen that one before. I didn't use them in, what, 15 years? There's my hole. Ah, cool. Yeah. There's one alignment line. Ah, see yeah, I see the alignment line. I should get a new license plate because you dented it. And everybody thinks now I dented it. Oh, no, it's true. See? Oh, it was the too hole. fast. I used to work as a electrical panel builder. So, the wiring guy. I got really big ones. Oh, my God. You know me from such videos as how to make a slot in a piece of sheet metal. <laughs> so this is finally the roller fairly set up. This is now suitable for a steel cable. If we have to do some serious winching, we would put on this fairly. I think that takes care of all the complaints we had. But now it wouldn't be at our time if this would be all. Now check out how long I take now to change this over. My LR Time license plate holder. So the license plate holder goes on here, like this. Okay, and the license plate holder accepts now a flat fairly, which is fine for, you know, the small household winches. If you gotta tow the mall crawler off a curbstone at the mall, things like this. This is perfectly fine. If I take the hook off and I slide this in, I can close this up with a magnet. This way we are street legal. The turf is not gonna complain, I think. And of course, when you open it, you have your LR time sticker, which is the most important thing. Yeah. When you look down here from the top, you can see that I had to put the hinges in an angle. So the hinge line is actually straight. This way you can toggle open a curved surface. Now, isn't that German engineering? <laughs> okay, so pretty simple design. And the custom fair lead accepts my M12 nuts using a 19 millimeter socket. Um, see here, this is my lever, which I can use to disconnect the clutch of the winch. And this works now the following way, okay? I'll put my remote right here. If I want to use the winch with the regular fair lead, I got to pull it out a bit, and now I want to pull it out and it don't work. So now watch, I got to actuate my clutch lever here, custom made with LR Time logo. I swing this over here, 180 degree. Now the clutch is open and I can pull this out have Vera walking up the hill. <laughs> oh, I'll do that. 20 yards, and now I want to pull, so I got to put the clutch lever back. 180 degrees, so it's completely hidden. 
And now I can use, I'm wearing cloths, okay? And this is a brand new rope. So when I'm all done winching, in my imagination, okay? I put this a little bit away here and close it. Cool. Nothing visible. Here you can see I got this clutch lever with minimal modification of the vehicle. Just had to cut out a couple of grams of plastic. Take it out so we can take a closer look. Okay, we'll do that. Here I take this, turn this off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because this is dangerous. The hood is still broken. And of course, this is depending from winch to winch. Oh, you ordered new, what did they call them? Gas springs. Yeah. Okay. So I got to hold it down now because the grill is actually holding it down. And you can see 180 degree and it sticks out here in the front. Yeah. Okay. And I had to do a little bit of trimming here, very slightly. Yeah. And a little bit of trimming here on this side. Yeah. There. Yeah, I take it out, so I put it in the front so I know how it goes back in. Yeah. There it is. So I machined a little adapter flange. I welded in an old Allen key. While I was doing that, I learned that they called Allen keys because the manufacturer is called Allen USA. Ah. Here I got like an M10 connection interface, and this is cut out of aluminum. Oh, let's yeah. see. It looks beautiful. Yes. Yeah. So now it's back in. See? Put it all the way over here. The grill can go back in and it can remain installed. You don't have to take this out now for all the winching. Cool. And we gotta disconnect our hook, okay? We can't have a permanent hook installed, otherwise this wouldn't close and it would have a dangerous obstacle here in the front. Yeah. That's it for this week's video. Um, we got our winch project now really complete. The drawings are up to date. We got our foldable license plate and we got our clutch engagement. And trust me, I'm going to do the wiring because I'm an electrician, okay? <laughs> so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That's important. Otherwise, it will not be promoted by YouTube to other viewers. And think about subscribing to this channel. And in any case, if you're already subscribed, please don't unsubscribe. See you next Sunday. Thanks for watching. <laughs> the winch now for almost a week and we actually have to use it because we can't finish off that log it's blocked in <laughs> and we can't get the chainsaw through <laughs> so Christian's gonna winch it out a little bit with our super cool winch he wanted to cheat and omit the whatever you call it we call it a shakel <laughs> well i showed him where the remote control is did you find it yeah i found it good <laughs> oh forgot <laughs> first time we're actually using it oh my battery is going on empty Yeah. Our splint he bought. It's the second time we actually lost it. He lost it inside the bag and couldn't find it. And now he lost it again. Yeah, but I lost the splint. <laughs> oh, yeah. there it is. <laughs> oh.